Achename Kennis, zijn naam is Paul, give him a call. Paul de Kuiper. That's it. Paul, and your company is Gigstarter, so welcome to Music Meets Tech here at Eurosonic. Very important. Paul, you've been developing your company, Gigstarter. Tell this, this audience, which is in Holland and the rest of the world, what Gigstarter is and does, and why you've committed your life to developing this. Gigstarter is the online marketplace for booking artists without a booking fee. Without a booking fee. Without a booking fee. That's Now, how is that possible? How is that possible? I can hear you thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> It started a few years ago. Yeah. I went with a former uh, band member of mine to a concert, and we saw a very bad lineup. And we thought we we noticed immediately that the programmer or the booker had problems with getting the right bookings. And we thought, how can this be possible? There are so much bands that are willing to play. We thought it was only a problem for bands to get the, the right gigs or DJs or musicians in general. Right. So we thought, okay, we must solve this problem. Right. So we had a vision and we said, wouldn't it be great if you would have an overview of artists where anyone could compare them, see what their music is and get in touch with them easily and they could manage their own gigs Without so, any intervention of anyone and no uh, overhead costs. So hold on a second. What you're saying is an agent normally fulfills that function or a booking agent mm -hmm. or a manager. Exactly. So Gigstarter does this so that it makes it even more organic and much, much more naturally quick. Exactly. You can right. have direct contact and things can be arranged very rapidly. And how do you... Uh, How do you get the bands to sign up to Gigstarter? Well, they sign up themselves. Really? Yeah, it's uh, growing organically. In the beginning, I had to go to jam sessions and meet artists right. and give my business card and takes time. talk to me, and it takes time. But uh, now artists are talking to one another and they're liking our platform because artists are getting gigs now in the Netherlands from our platform. So it works, and that's the most important thing. So now that part is growing by itself. So when did you first start the company and how big is the team that you've got developing the platform and its outreach? Well, we had the idea, uh, the epiphany, three years ago. And uh, two years ago, we really started setting up the company. Oh. And uh, now we're working with a team of three persons. and uh, Based in Amsterdam. Based in Amsterdam. Right. Uh, and focusing until now on the Netherlands. But now we're looking abroad. So the kind of music or the kind of artist that you represent, is it all in an electronic dance music frame, the kind of stuff that ADE does every November, or what? No, we want to create an overview. And we want to solve your problem. When right. you're looking for an artist, be it a DJ, be it a, a singer-songwriter, whatever, you can find it through our platform. At the moment, we've got 800 sign-up artists wow. with their profiles online. Wow. And, uh, How did you sign them all up? Was it did, did some of it come because word of mouth told people about Gigstarter that bands want to be part of it? Well, I'm a musician myself. So What do you play? I, uh, I play guitar and I sing uh -huh. uh, in a Dutch band uh -huh. called uh, Note Muscat. That means not Mac in uh, English. So, uh, so I had my little uh, entrance there, and I knew where the jam sessions were. So uh, I just went, went there and I just talked to my friends and talked to their friends and they started to talk themselves to their friends. So that was how it went. And so has gigstarter.nl been picked up by some of the agents or is it essentially directed to the musicians, the performers and the managers? At the moment, it's used by the DIY, the do-it-yourself segment. Right. But it doesn't have to be. Actually, we would prefer everyone to use it because we, pref we want... An, to create an overview. So you've got some slides here. Let's take a look yeah. at... Uh, sure. Uh, I just wanted to show you uh, what what we have right now, right. That, what we've created. Uh, this is what you see when you come to your homepage. Uh, find and you book can live start, music. You can start a query. You can start looking by a genre right. or, or, an, or type of artist or a type of uh, event. Then you can see an overview with which we create transparency and accessibility, and you can compare artists. We create insight into pricing, wow. and we make it really uh, accessible. Uh, well, 
first I must say that you, the art, the profile can be seen as an online CV of the artist, right. on which they get reviews right. and grades. Um, and you can send them a direct message, which the artist can see in its, in its dashboard. Huh. So here they have like their online management tool, which in the future can bring a lot of new other management aspects. Absolutely but at the right. moment we're focusing still on the bookings. And what we want to do is spread the word. No hassle, just music internationally. What's your business model for making sure that whilst you are still playing as a musician, obviously, you want to at least make Gigstarter earn some money. Revenue, yeah. Um, we believe that a bit somewhere between 20 and 30% of the sign-up artists right. will choose for a premium model. They want to become members. We're really a community, so maybe it can be even more. It's only 10 euros per month, so it's not a lot of money. And actually, with one gig, they can pay the fee for an entire year. And with oh. that, we want to lower the barrier for booking live music. So this means that what you're looking at is developing a volume of <coughs> many, many different bands, each paying 10 euros a month. Certainly. And actually, the next step, apart from growing abroad, would be to also get booking agencies on the platform and right. let them pay maybe more, because they have more artists. And because this is a do-it-yourself segment, there would be many bands within this particular Kickstarter group, kind of like Kickstarter is for, for, for new products and platforms, mm -hmm. but many of these bands might not even be on the books of the conventional agents or the promoters, right? Exactly. They're under the radar. So right. it's a new segment that we're getting out of the abyss. So to Very say. interesting. So it's under the radar gig starting that then develops the first of course, audience development of, the, of an act. Exactly. And of course the idea is to grow along with the artists and the artists let them grow along with us both internationally but but also in name so the idea is that they like it so much that within 10 years when they're famous artists they're still using Gigstarter. So how are you going to get the Gigstarter concept working outside of Holland because certainly in the UK or in the United States or in uh, other parts of the world there would be bands that would love to be part of this. This is a very interesting, you've got 800 artists already on Gigstarter. Mm -hmm. Are you starting to see this uh, organic pickup and development with it? Um, sorry, what, what's the question you, exactly? You've got 800 bands, yeah. you yeah. say. Yeah. Now that you've got 800, is the word of mouth helping you? Each month, are you seeing more just joining on and yeah, paying sure. you the 10 euros a month? Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 both. I mean, both subscriptions are growing. We're growing uh, between 15, 20% per month. Um, and the same counts for the subscriptions. They grow along. Very interesting. So if you look at the next six to 12 months, what do you have on your development path and your radar for Gigstarter itself? I think it would be wise to go to one country which we should select carefully, uh, show that it can be done in other markets as well, other cultures, uh, and with that grow a plan to go out fast to more countries in one time. So which country do you think that might be? Well, I'm not going to tell, it's a secret. No, but you've got to look at a, at a country that has got a lot of bands, a lot of gigs, a lot of exactly. live action. Yeah. That could be the UK, it could be Sweden, it could be France, it could be... Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that there's a big market in, in all countries because people just there love is. music. It's only in different settings. Right. I mean, in Ireland, it's more in the pub, but in right. Spain, it's more at the fiestas uh, right, right. in the summer. So the market is there. That's not the problem. I think the most important thing is that people are open to it. People are open to paying online. Um, art artists are, are interested in using such a thing, but of also very important is that we have the network there to do the same thing the way we did it in the Netherlands or maybe even faster. Okay, so <clears throat> to as we're running out of time to close this off, if people want to call Paul and want to get in touch with Kickstarter, how do we reach you and how do we reach Kickstarter? Well, they can call me or they can send me an email 
to, to, to what? Paul at Kickstarter. Paul at Kickstarter. NL. That's it. You respond promptly, and this goes out to bands, to managers, to those people that feel they need to be able to start a development path for their gigs, and only 10 euros a month. Is it better to be on Spotify or Kickstarter? We think, says Paul. Kickstarter is the way to go. Paul, thank you. Thanks for coming in, and good to be on Music Meets Tech. Thank you very much.